it's going to get pretty weird. But welcome to the inaugural Japanese Super Touring Championship after a successful stretch of world and European races. Japan puts its name in the fray and every single one of Japanese mainstay manufacturers has answered the call, especially the Toyota team who we knew uh, in the build up to the last this season or the end of last season, what they were going to do with that Corolla. We were hoping that they were going to enter the worlds with it, but they've decided to put all their eggs in this championship instead and it is going to be on based on appearances i mean it's it's been a very promising event so far but i think every other manufacturer or every team and driver in this race is going to be baying for blood against one of the strongest outfits going and in qualifying we've seen it already a change of weather pattern mid session meant that uh, the Carnot there in the Mitsubishi got the fastest time in early on and was never beaten in qualifying whatsoever. But we expect to see the stronger input by Honda, Toyota, and the Mazdas perhaps, or even the Kazuki E Day's chase uh, team, uh, Crown Athlete. Um, making an appearance as well but um it's despite it being a very national championship there is international appeal so you'll see brits you'll see germans you'll see brazilians and you see uh, a norwegian driver in eighth as well um in all that excitement we are awake we are uh, raring to go we've had all the coffee in the world uh, ingested in any way shape or form to make sure that we are raring to go for this and um, Michael Swinnerton uh, I'm assuming you've done the same as well I mean swap coffee for energy drinks because I'm odd and don't like hot drinks but otherwise yes you're, you're pretty much bang on the money there we have no idea how this is going to pan out we obviously predict Toyota should do well but if they don't it's not a good look for the decision that they've made. Away, off the line, they go. And the front wheel drive Honda of Jason Scaife, or Jack Scaife rather, was looking at getting down the inside. But the swarm there, Nakano and Naruse are already into first and second there. Katayama's Mazda already up to third. So Nakano leads Naruse down the inside, but. Nakajima's Mazda there. Okay, so the uh, Nerusai Toyota bailed out of whatever move it was going to make. And Katayama and Scaife look raring to go there. Nakano off to a flyer. Bit of a swarm further back. No doubt you'll see white, red and black being the theme of the day. But there are other colours on show. Especially that light blue on the Mazda. And the dark of the Chaser Team Crown Athlete. Uh, well, we'll have to see where we are by the time race one comes along and finishes rather it's the shorter version of the layout so when we head to Dunlop here no tight well for Nomura it might have been Ide nearly took his teammate out there but it's a much more sympathetic turn into the final three corners then tighter they get with an even tighter final turn then and a promising start for those uh, Crown Athletes. I'm still trying not to say Chaser, that's the name of the team, and you probably see why it's the um, livery of the, the old Chaser from the Japanese Touring Car Championship way back when. Here's an oddball effort, though. We did kind of think it was a bit odd that uh, Mercedes were in Japan, but there's a very good reason for that. A lot of four-wheel drive on display, including Takahashi Subaru down the inside already. Lap one almost complete. Yeah, it's been very, very frantic so far. We'll have to see what these Hondas can do. I will say Scaife managed to keep uh, hold his own off off the line there with a front-wheel drive car. He didn't get mugged as much as I thought he was going to, and he's he's still in fourth. He's still in play there. Yeah. The the power of the or the top line speed through the majority of the back section, but you've got just that climb. I think um, 
was is going to be his downfall throughout this race perhaps Nakano still leads Naruse second Katayama is still third and four different makes in the top four including one privateer and five different cars in the top six we've got uh, two different types of Mazda as well here's the other one Nakajima in the Atenza yes of course it is it is, it is in fact an Atenza because we are in Japan I know a lot of people at home will be going no that's a Mazda 6 but it has a different name over in this country as they all just file through single file to chase a motorsports cars having a little bit of a squabble as to who should lead the charge on the Honda that's a bit tight well, Takahashi, the teammate, uh, Ide, the team leader, sorry, Nomura, rather, um, giving him a bit of a shock just then. But this is a promising start for what, effectively, is last year's World Cars. Ide uh, had enough of a say on getting this car onto the grid because he still defends it. He still wants this car to do well, uh, despite Toyota's... Um, opinion on it after two years. Here's not Katayama it's though. On the outside, I don't think that's going to work. Points for trying so was... though. Naruse, being the local hero, uh, got the uh, Japanese slot ahead of uh, Ide, but I think perhaps he didn't want that. Um, he wanted that crown athlete to work. So. I mean, Butcher. that makes sense. Naruse has been racing Toyotas since the late 90s, I believe. He's been around for a long, long time. And he's always been in a Toyota. He is factory driver through and through. The Japanese do loyalty here in a, in a very intense way. Hence the reason why Butcher is the second uh, Corolla. Fifth place so far. Not necessarily out of place, but we'll have to wait and see when we get to places like uh, High Speed Ring and the Yamagiwa, see where he is uh, in that regard. Yeah, that's get definitely going to be Butcher's biggest challenge this year, is learning a whole heap of new circuits. He knows Fuji, of course, because of his time in the World Series, uh, going here and using both layouts over the years. But he has got very much an uphill battle in, as you say, learning the likes of High Speed Ring and Autopolis and Suzuka and what have you, which I don't think he's ever turned a wheel around. Not in racing, at least. May have been testing, uh, well, no doubt he would have been testing a High Speed Ring and obviously the media day. Everyone had to get a grip with a completely new circuit, not been used for 20 years, 15 or so. Here's the top three still, but oh, oh my well, god, we, are we get go three wide. wide turn one. Is that really? Thank you. Okay, Kate Kate just bailed out. Naruse down the inside. It. This is Naruse's best chance yet to take the lead away from the privateer Mitsubishi that's still leading the way here. Still Akio. side by side. They might have the better run. There we go. Naruse we now go. leads. Akio, Naruse, Namura. He has put it on the side of the car, but we know that um, that's going to change. Um, that was uh, not necessarily an admin mistake, but there is another Namura, and I think for future reference, despite it being completely different cars, Naruse uh, will be on the side of the car by the time we get to the next round. There's Namura in the obviously a different car around the outside of uh, Takahashi. Oh, that's Rustad Rustad in that Subaru. Yeah, there was just a big scrum going into the hairpin there and everyone tripped over each other. Rustad the Norwegian, rally knowledge, but um, holding his own so far, ahead of the second-hand crowns. Here's Takahashi. Takahashi just heading up what seems to be the second group here, the outside the top ten group looking in with Takahashi and Muto and Winterbottom here. Heading up now, those are the Genesis cool. uh, brand uh, G70s. Um, very well presented, uh, if a little bit sponsor bond. Well, they've gotten the the backing of a lot of Korean firms who've who've taken to the idea. 
of motorsports and advertising it this way and expanding their reach via sponsorships so you'll see a lot of korean based uh, uh brands on this car on board with the bottom as we see muto and sakahashi decide who's going to get the inside line for turn one but here comes with the bottom uh, don't go into the quarter panel that's never going to go well it didn't look good further up mind there was a bit of a tussle further ahead with the other uh, subaru of rustad here's ingram in the second of the mitsubishis Started oh, no, pretty far down. down on the grid and he's slowly working his way up. That was a no, cheeky was a move, move right there. That was a good move. That was that was very much if gap car and it somehow paid off for him. And he's gonna if gap car again down the head by the looks of it. Has he? Yes. He <laughs> certainly has. Well, two Genesis well, is well. in two turns. That's efficient. He skipped Genesis, he's onto Revelation by now. <laughs> That's a different story. Takahashi further up. E Day still in tenth. And I will say with the fastest lap. Athletes, as you said, giving a good a good showing for a a second hand privateer car with a pretty shoestring budget to boot. And here they are with the coveted tenth place position because of course this championship running the same rule set so. For race two, it will be a top ten reverse grid. That's going to be a good look. And if things stay as they are right now, it's going to be an entirely crown athlete front row, which is going to look very interesting. And here we have a battle for the ages. Mitsubishi versus Subaru. Takahashi, the local, Ingram, the outsider. Different gen of car as well. You expect Subaru. Uh, oh, well, I'm still a bit confused on whose works who isn't here, but we know for a fact that this is, you know, when everyone's expected to see, despite Toyota's works effort, this is the rivalry right here. Subaru and Mitsubishi for four-wheel drive on us. Round the outside. the outside. Oh, it's tough. Still too wide. He's going to have the preferred line into turn two. It just depends on how brave he is on the brakes. There is no way he's a rookie. There is no way he's a rookie to this championship if he's doing moves like that. We've yeah, seen how well he does. He said this he's is... never had much, he hasn't had any racing experience in a four-wheel drive car before, but here we are. Outside of Namura. Oh my lord. Well then. E day up to ninth. Ingram now on the tenth place pole position spot. Yeah, it was it was a case of if, but you know. I mean Nakano has already proven that, that Mitsubishi, whilst it is a privateer team. Um, does have some speed and some pace to it, and there he and goes again. There's a front-wheel drive Honda is about to eclipse as well. It would be nice if it was eclipse in here too, but that's an older car. Yeah, that would be way too old. What a traffic jam as we go oh through to the penultimate turn, next corner. And Ingram just decided whilst everyone Ingram. was tripping over each other, he would just go around the outside of everyone and ignore all the apexes, and that's clearly worked pretty well. Now this is Ooh, where we bit of wiggle start to, was a wobble on from Ingram there. This is where we start to get into the tyre debate again. Single make provider and I'm hoping they don't fall down the same rabbit hole that um, the works or the sorry the world uh, has where you know I'm pretty sure they want to make a tyre work and last and therefore It'll have all of the grip and all of the durability and nothing in terms of entertainment to show for it. But that being said, we're seeing Nurse and Katayama still battling for sec first and second. Nakano has fallen back, but you can still see him with Butcher up to fourth now. Scaife down to sixth. Nakajima's uh, Mazda also playing ball as well. That's giving a so very good showing in fifth place. Top level points on us now. Three of them just having a bit of a, a squeeze. Ingram a has gone there. up to six to head escape. Something, I mean, yeah. we're going to have to have a, have a look at that car later because it's it seems to be in a different division altogether. Just lapping traffic and making a gap on Scaife as if he was already behind him. That's going to be fastest. That's going to eclipse. Well, Personia had the fastest lap just now, but it looks like unless. 
and there's no way that Mitsubishi's not going to handle these final turns and the hills, no doubt. Up alongside his teammate Nakano, no doubt, by the time we get to the end of the race. But that fastest lap is going to be um, gone by the time the end of the lap comes along to Ingram. And I don't think anyone's going to beat that. It's kind of surprising that Pitsonia has the fastest lap, considering he is the other works Mazda 3 driver, and he's down in 16th. He's outside the points currently. So he must have gotten that with slipstreaming help. Well, Narusa has just put the fastest lap in, but Ingram's about to cross the line there now. You go. Oh, there we go. <laughs> and then a rare sight in. We saw it in media day. Anna Degrassi's Volkswagen Golf fan base here. We've seen them. They do exist. There is such a thing as a Japanese Volkswagen. Oh, yeah. Well, I think these Hondas are just... Uh, they haven't quite got the handling down on those Civics yet because they're holding people Escape up. has fallen back. Ingram had looked like he was a bit slow on the exit of the first corner. Oh, yeah, the fact that he's gone spacing out now. I've been looking at the timing board on the right there. I mean, the, the term inconsistent comes to mind, despite that power lap we just saw. I mean. A, a, a set of lap times like that, you can easily attribute it to traffic, and we know Ingram has just navigated a lot of traffic over the last few laps. Fair enough. But yeah, he just gets so and much more apex speed through there than everybody else, and makes it work. Nakajima, I'm not sure that was the smartest, having a look on the inside of the Kano there. I don't know whether you've noticed, mate, but there's a second Mitsubishi appearing on you. Oof. You did point it out that it happened earlier. We didn't expect any rear-to-front damage there. Yeah, different apex Second speeds, the and they can catch you out Round so the outside quickly. again, are you kidding? Oh, I don't know. Okay, got caught on the grass then. But that Mazda is a diesel, so it might have a lot of straight-line speed to it because it's got a lot of torque compared to the other cars. Yeah, you can tell the draw compared to the slight roar of the Mitsubishi engine. Yeah, definitely the base out of this band. F five to go. Practically stops on the apex though, that's not going to help his lap time at all. As Meanwhile, did they, as did the ED crown. Early on, that shouldn't be, that shouldn't be happening. Everybody well, just tripping over each other at the hairpin again. I think the, as I say, these Hondas, I don't think they've quite got the setup right on these cars. And they are brand new cars, so they'll have a lot to work out with them. Because they nice. are just holding people up, and especially at slow apexes. Which, Should considering if that's happening deceptive. around here, that's going to be yeah. a very big problem when we get to Scuba later on in the season. Certainly. Um, hard to tell if they are completely new cars if the livery implies that it's the um, last year's works livery. But obviously, if it's a new car, what more can you do? Just a slight difference in the number. Learn. <laughs> and, of course, different drivers as well. Jason Scaife. Sorry, Jack Scaife. I'm getting the, getting the brothers mixed up there. And Satoru Suzuki um, in the number six. Yeah, Suzuki there. does have front-wheel drive experience. Scaife does not. So Scaife will be leaning on Suzuki a fair old bit for help on how to really get the wrangle the most out of a front wheel drive chassis. He's adapting a bit better than um, the European uh, competitor Radisic was doing uh, in that front wheel drive. Not necessarily the same car, but it was a Honda, wasn't it? Yeah, um, it was the older Kiwi's... model FK8 Civic, although you are on, you are treading dangerous ground comparing a Kiwi to an Aussie. I'll just, I'll just ah. <laughs> point that one out now. <laughs> of course, of course, I'll take that back. <laughs> We end the broadcast. Uh, Nakajima there, still fifth. The it's the butcher train now because I think Katayama yeah, and Arusai. They've Rusai. all caught butcher. Brief glimpse at the top two, just as the camera pans around. Mazda's factory effort, putting on quite a show. Yeah, very much min max at the minute. Mazda, considering they've got a car in second and then a car outside of the points, so. That'll be a bit of a head-scratcher for them of what worked for Katayama that hasn't for Pitsonia. But the top two so, just holding their position, holding their own for now. 
and in a way so does work's effort and their uh, their decision to head to Japan. It's race one, yes, but I think they'll say they were vindicated in doing this, but still early days yet. This is a beginner's Absolutely. battle, that's for sure. And they've got a lot more development time on that Toyota because, of course, they were testing it for the World Series. So those Corollas have a bit more mileage on compared to some of the other cars on this grid. And that's also going to pay dividends for them. And we are seeing it pay dividends for them right now. E-Day getting Sorry. himself amongst the two Hondas. He's got through one. Wonder the how long it'll be before we hovering get the dangerously one. around the tenth, eleventh place. So, yeah. whilst they might not get pull, one of them is going to at least one of them is going to benefit, but the other one is going to be hindered by the uh, front runners getting off uh, ahead of them for race two, as the cloud cover and um, getting flashbacks of the final race uh, last year. Mm. Even though there's three to go, does that mean something quickly this way comes in terms of moisture? I mean, we know, as I said, as I said for the the World Series broadcast, we know Fuji has a habit of just throwing rain, almost like a random dice roll at you. So you can't rule it out. And even if it does appear, I think that'll be too late for anyone to make either any change or to survive. A, a clean lap if it was going to suddenly monsoon it down. Anna de Grassi in 12th. Very good look for the uh, hatchback. Four wheel drive, no doubt. Um, no, that Golf is the only non Honda oh, well front then. wheel drive car on the grid. That's what I was about to say. It's a very good showing for one of four front wheel drive cars on this grid. X works as well. And holding its own against um, some brand new Genesis. Danny yeah. Winterbottom. Slight. Another Aussie to adapt in one of the hardest ways possible. Um, not getting as better performance out of his Genesis as Scaif is out of his Honda. Yeah, there's a lot. I mean, you can tell the, the teams who are new at this, considering how. We're used to seeing in other series, of course, you know, works entries towards the front and then privateers towards the back with a, a little bit of overlap here and there. But of course, what we're seeing here is, you know, privateers in the top five, privateers occupying the top 10, and some works entries just really struggling towards the back. I mean, look at Mercedes, 17th and 18th. Yes. That's not the a good start to their career or their season. Yes. The experience uh, shows, and having a having a four-wheel drive Mercedes out of its element, big risk on uh, Mercedes' part there. Brief glimpse of the first ever uh, Super Touring franchise car in our Honda, alongside Alan Frenson in the M4, another privateer. They're propping up the entry list, uh, but keeping a very good account of themselves. We knew that but, Honda uh, was going to back. struggle, given its age. So that's sadly to be expected, though I'm sure Frenson will want to do a little bit better than this come race two. Considering we know I what a, a BMW M4 is capable of and what Weber just did with it. And, well, ooh, then. around the outside, Almost. that's an interesting idea. I mean, Ingram's already made it work several times. And that Mercedes is the biggest carrot that... that uh, friends and BMW was ever going to chase for race one that's going to be something to uh, lord over Mercedes if ever there was one almost a lap to go Naruse still leads Katayama in the Mazda Butcher and then I was saying, no, Nakajima's fourth and then the two Mitsubishis very good account for Paul I suppose this is very good considering oh well, hello that was uh, a bit too Ingram. much inside Kerban try again <laughs> not in charge of him anymore <laughs> or are you <laughs> no 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 but i can still text him and annoy him <laughs> but yes Indeed. formation uh, flying from the mitsubishi's currently one's gone started well and gone a little bit backwards and one started at the back and gone very very forwards so i'll give him yeah. some good data to work on for 
the upcoming races in the season. And we've got both Mitsubishis in front of Subaru, so that's that's bragging rights right there as well as championship points. Bragging rights for Raleigh's uh, Rustad as well. Um, I did not expect that out of uh, him, but well, we didn't expect it out of Ede's chaser either. That's in eighth now. And Namura um, clinging on to the potential P1 for race two, but Degrassi's got something to chase after as well. This is going to be a turn-up, whatever the outcome. I think Degrassi's got more a bigger issue at the moment in her rearview mirror, given Winterbottom and that Genesis right now. Scape has fallen back somewhat now, so we thought Winterbottom was going to be impacted, but he's now just got ahead of his counterpart in um, trying to adapt rather than uh, stick to Australian uh, muscle. But uh, final turn. What did what else did we expect? It was gonna be a shock if it didn't happen. There's the wiper blades. Mm. There's the rain. Okay. Very much too Better little too late. Than <laughs> but yes, Toyota will um I th I think that would be more sigh of relief than sort of yes yeah, vindicated. Um two types of Mazda in the top four. Mitsubishi 1, Subaru 0. Oh, sorry. Mitsubishi 2, Subaru 0. Ide and his teammate are going to be very pleased with that. And the rest of them crossed the line. And it's unfortunate that Ellen Frenson got last. But that was quite some interesting battles towards the end of the race. The format, um, I, I think, I mean, I don't think we expected anything, um, well, there can be more excitement, but the fact that it wasn't dull um, is uh, promise enough, I reckon. What do you say, Sweeney? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm once again, I'm going to repeat myself from what I said from the World's broadcast. It's a big track with a lot of runoff, and I, it, it's quite wide. So you're always going to get cars spread out a little bit more because they've quite literally got the space to do so. But we had moments of excitement. We had people parking it on apexes. And then watching the next six cars behind them all trip over each other to not hit each other too hard because of it. Um, if that rain keeps up that started on the very last lap there, then race two is going to be very interesting because, of course, a lot of these teams have barely got any setup data at all. Throwing rain into that mix is really going to ramp up the hard mode. Absolutely. Um, therefore, uh, first win in the column for Narusai and for Toyota but boy can we not wait for race two and see what happens with the uh, bragging rights for everyone considered uh, throughout the field drivers manufacturers um, we're going to let the fans uh, swarm the pit lane get some more signatures in and we'll see you for race two good racing everyone